Well, I am so grateful that you've decided to join us here on this Epiphany Sunday. Uh, we're, you notice it's still a little bit decorated for Christmas. I hope your home is as well, too. Do you know Christmas, of course, is a 12-day celebration, which just ended on Thursday. However, there is this larger cycle of Christmas that goes all the way up until the day before Fat Tuesday, by the way, the day before Ash Wednesday. That is called the Christmas cycle. It includes Advent, Christmas, and Epiphany. Today, we start the Epiphany season. Actually, Friday was the day of the Epiphany, and that's the coming of the wise men. We're going to hear about that today. We're going to celebrate that in our worship service. Just a couple of announcements before we begin. Uh, great news if you actually come in person. You will notice that our bathrooms are 95% of the way done. They're usable. You can use them. So we rejoice and give thanks. Of course, uh, we, we have, uh, we've made some significant improvements there and are turning now our attention this week to the fellowship hall. So hopefully in a month or so, we'll be back down to our regular setting in the fellowship hall for this worship service. It's always really cramped up here in this back office. If you've been to the church, you know how cramped it is back here. It's hard to fit more than 15, 20 people uh, in this room. And so we, uh, we have to limit our numbers in this service uh, when we broadcast it. Today, guess what? I'm by myself except for with you. So we're going to do the best that we can with what we have. That means that I will not be able to both play the guitar and put the words of the music on the screen for you today. I'm not that talented. Trust me. But I will, we'll, we'll do the best. We'll nurture through these songs as best we can. We'll have a great time, I hope, with the worship service regardless. Um, couple of people concerns we do ask. We've been praying for a little boy named Mikey, and again, uh, we just pray for him and continue to pray for his family. He's an eight-year-old boy, had many struggles at birth and continues to struggle, but his parents, God placed him in the right care of the right people for their uh, loving parents who care for this boy. Unfortunately, he had multiple heart attacks over the course of the last few weeks, months, a month or so. Uh, he's home now, but they believe that there is some uh, damage as far as his, his abilities. Uh, so he, he's struggling even a little bit more. So we just pray that you pray for his family, in particular for Mike, for Jenna. Just keep them in your prayers. We also our bookkeeper at the church who takes care of our financial records and so forth. Her mom died. And so we just pray that you pray for Candy and ask that you keep her in your prayers as well, too. Um, other announcements this Tuesday, we resume our Tuesday services. We will continue to broadcast a service on Tuesday. We've been we've had a lot of good response from that. It will not be a prayer time of prayer. We're done with its season of prayer. It's time for us to move to what God wants us to do. I'm really excited about that. We'll have some announcements coming up about meetings that you can come to and be a part of and have your voice heard. Maybe God has given you something. That's coming up very soon. But we will have a Tuesday service that will be broadcast. We want to make sure that you have the opportunity to still participate with that. Also, uh, Wednesday will be youth group. Resume that after our, our Christmas hiatus. And then Friday, we have the youth lock-in that will not take place here. We are joining with our partners at St. John's Lutheran Church in North for Sales. And the lock-in will be out there at their church. Our fellowship hall is still a disaster area, not a place yet that where we can have a youth lock in. All right, but that's going on this week, and then of course Sunday school resumes resumes next week, a uh, week from today. Boy, lots of things going on, kind of an exciting brand new year. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. We invite you to prepare your heart with a time of confession and forgiveness. We know that we are forgiven by what Jesus Christ has done, but it is important for us to acknowledge the great cost that our Lord has paid, that we might have relationship with the Almighty God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is through water and the Spirit that God gives us new life, let us confess our sin that we may be renewed in the covenant of holy baptism.
strong and faithful God, we confess that we have not lived as the body of Christ in the world. We have veiled our hearts from light. We have resisted your call to follow. We have failed to exercise your gift of love. Forgive us for the sake of Christ. Heal us with your abundant grace and help us walk as children of the light. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ came amongst us to proclaim release to the captives, to let the oppressed go free. Today this promise is fulfilled. God forgives us our sins. So may the Holy Spirit strengthen you to follow in Christ in newness of life. Amen. Our first song for today is the first Noel. Come along as best as you can. Lord God, on this day you revealed your Son to the nations by a star. 
Lead us now by faith to know your presence in our lives, and bring us at last to the full vision of your glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our gospel lesson for this day of our celebration of the Epiphany is found in the book of Matthew, the second chapter. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is this child of whom, uh, who has been born, King of the Jews? We have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. Now when King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together the chief priests and scribes of the peoples, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to be shepherd of my people. Herod secretly called the wise men and learned from them the exact time that the star had appeared. Then he sent to them, to Bethlehem and said, Go, search diligently for this child, and when you have found him, bring word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out there ahead of them and went to the, and saw the star where that they had seen from its rising until it stopped near the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they stopped, and there they were overwhelmed with joy. And on entering into the house, they saw a child with Mary, his mother. They knelt down and paid him homage. And it opened their treasure chests, offering to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another room. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. We do give you thanks, O God, for the blessings of this word for today, and ask it would inspire us and uh, open up our hearts to, to what you want us to hear. For we ask this all in Jesus' name. Well, did you hear that lesson? You always thought that the wise men came with the shepherds. You know, if you've got Christmas cards, our Christmas lesson, I sent out Christmas cards that showed that to the wise men with the, the shepherds, and it was a busy night on that Christmas day in Nazareth, or in, uh, pardon me, in Bethlehem. But that's not really what happened. The shepherds came the night of Jesus' birth. The wise men, well, we don't know exactly when they came. All I can tell you is they were no longer in the manger. Jesus wasn't. What did it say? They were in a house. So it sounds like the Holy Family was planning on staying for a while, maybe settling and making Bethlehem their home. You can remember, this is where, where Joseph was from. It was a comfortable place. They had friends there. So here was Joseph and the Holy Family. These wise men came. Maybe when Jesus was a couple of weeks old. Jesus might have been a couple months old. Jesus might have been as many as two years of age by the time the wise men got there. We don't know. What we do know that is that this was probably around 4 to 6 B.C. So really, if, you wanted, if our calendars were correct, you know what year it would be right now? About 2026 or 2028 A.D., somewhere in there? We don't know. These are details that we're just not privy to. But we do know that Herod the Great, the man that was mentioned, the crazy guy who had all the children killed in Bethlehem, died in 4 BC. We do know that. So we do know that Jesus was born before we think he was born. So he was born somewhere between 4 and 6 BC. So who were these wise guys that came to see Jesus? Well, let me tell you a little bit about them and who we think they were. We think that they were from Persia. Why Persia? Well, let me tell you a little bit about Persia. Persia was at one time the mighty superpower of the entire Middle East. They were the big baddies who came and defeated Babylon and to the great glee and joy of the Jews, they released the Jews from their captivity in Babylon and sent them home to Jerusalem to rebuild the city. So I will tell you, the Jews were actually quite fond of the Persians. 
The Persians were the good guys in their telling of these stories. And then came the bad guys. You know who the bad guys were? The Greeks. Western civilization loves the Greeks. I'm fond of the Greek language, obviously, and I'm fond of many of the Greek traditions and mythologies and so forth, and we owe a great deal to the Greeks, but the Jews were not fond of the Greeks. The Persians were the heroes. So you remember that great battle. Maybe you've seen the movie The 300 or heard about the 300 Spartans who stood up against, the, uh, against that evil Persian Empire once again. If you're a Jew, you're rooting for the Persians. The Greeks are the bad guys. Here's what happened. The Persians ultimately lost. The Greeks became the new big baddies on the, on, on, in the town. And they took over the place. And they came in and basically destroyed Jerusalem. They destroyed the temple. They desecrated it. So the Jews were not fond of the Greeks, all right? So then what happened is the Romans beat the Greeks. Now we're up to time of, of Jesus, all right? Herod the Great, he was a great man, at least in terms of what he accomplished, was not even a Jew. He had some lineage of uh, some, some Jewish background, but for the most part, he was from a Greek background. So many Jews were very skeptical and cynical of him. But he came and did a big rebuilding project and rebuilt the temple, and it was beautiful, apparently. But he was also a little bit crazy and a little jealous of his position, his power. He even had some of his kids killed. It is in this context that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. So you can imagine, he was none too happy to hear that there was a king born in Jerusalem. The one who might be the Messiah. But these wise men, again, who were they? Why did we start all the way back with the Persians in this story? We believe that they were Persian royalty. After Persia was destroyed, many Persian royalty and educated people traveled throughout the world, learning, educating themselves, but also bringing education. They were also stargazers, and they believed that the stars told us something about the future. So they saw this star residing over Bethlehem, and they said, this is a sign of the coming of the Jews' Messiah. Let's go and pay him homage. So what does this story tell us? You heard the rest of the story. I don't want to go into all the details, but I will tell you, the story for today tells us multiple things. It's a wonderfully layered, rich story. I hope you will read it again. But in essence, what we are learning from the story today about the coming of the wise men is that, first of all, this Jesus, who was born in Bethlehem, was not just for the Jews. He was for everybody. In fact, if you were to take a look at Persia today, who are the Persians? Oh, the Iranians. The people of Iran are Persians. Not all of them. Of course, they had... Uh, a great deal of influx uh, of Arabic peoples who moved into, into Iran. But there's still a great number. The Persians were the original people who resided in Iran. Freddie Mercury. There you go. <laughs> he was a Persian. His family went to the United Kingdom to settle and live. But this is who the Persians are today. God came for them as well. And not just them, but all people. They were kind of exotic in the East. But basically by them coming to pay homage to Jesus is an indication that this Jesus is opening up the kingdom of heaven to everybody, not just Jews. Oh, but we're not done. They came and by their gifts indicated who this Jesus was. They gave him a gift of gold, a gift fit for a king, they gave him gift of frankincense, the gift of a priest. That was the incense that you would use in worship services. If you go to many Catholic churches today, you might actually, and even some Lutheran churches, they will sometimes use the incense of frankincense to bless the, uh, uh, the space before worship, the altar area. So maybe you have smelled it before. So frankincense was the gift of a priest. Jesus is the last and final priest. 
He is the true mediator between God and humans. Everybody else is just a pretender. But then that wasn't all. They gave him gift of myrrh. Myrrh? <laughs> myrrh is a burial spice. Of course, indicative of the death that Jesus would die. It is this that brought the power of of Jesus into this world to bring salvation. So here's what I'm going to tell you. Jesus Christ isn't just a light in the world, or Jesus Christ isn't just a way to God. Jesus Christ isn't just a ray of hope and sunshine. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Jesus Christ is the way to God and the only way to God. Jesus Christ is the hope of the world. There is nowhere else that you can turn. Not to yourself, not to your priest or pastor, not to some other religion. Jesus Christ is the way in which our relationship with God is restored. And so we come this day to the light, to Jesus Christ. He sheds his light upon us, and we receive the love of God. Relationship with God, the abiding presence of God, through the gift of Jesus Christ. Let us rejoice and give thanks this day. Heavenly Father, we do thank you again for the gift of Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, the hope, the life of this world, through whom your light has shined upon us. We give thanks for this gift this day. We continue to celebrate the spirit and the wonderful gift of Jesus Christ this Christmas season. And we pray that you'd send us forth in your peace, in his precious name. Amen. Oh, I know we got another hymn, and you don't have the words, but I think you know some of the words of this song. We Three Kings, and so let us sing together our hymn of the day.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks again for the blessings of this day. For the faith that we share in Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, the life. We pray that you would bring that hope to this world today. For we have been looking for hope in all the wrong places. We've looked for hope in political leaders. Well, you've seen how that works. It never works out well. It always ends badly. Because they don't have any hope for us. We look for hope in ourselves. Good golly. What a horrible place to look for hope. Because we fail even ourselves. Let alone the people around us. We look to our family. Our family can be taken from us in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. As we again mourn the loss of loved ones over this Christmas season. As many can attest, those people who made their lives for them are now gone. God, we can't depend upon the money that we've raised. These are... <laughs> nobody knows what's going to happen with the economy. It's... And it's a struggle right now for many people to live. And so we pray your blessing upon those who are struggling to put food on the table. There's violence in this world. We think of the people of Ukraine and ask your light to shine upon them. Because this is where hope begins, God. The gift of Jesus Christ. So I pray that you would help us to turn to you. For those who are hurting in any way. For those who are sorrowful for those who are living in broken relationships, for those whose health has taken a bad turn, for those who struggle with cancer or are afraid about what tomorrow might bring. God, we ask that you would touch them this day. Fill them with your Holy Spirit, that they might know the consolation and the security of your love for them. It's not about me. It's not about what we do. It's about what you have done for us in Jesus Christ. We have hope no matter what tomorrow might bring. Because Jesus is with us. And so, Lord, we close our prayer time today praying the prayer that we were taught by our Lord Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We close today with one more song. It is my absolute favorite epiphany hymn. As with gladness. Menable. Once again, I am so sorry that we do not have the words in front of you today. But again, join with us as best as you can. Oh!
peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful Epiphany season. Have a wonderful New Year.